The wood grows around the walls of the Mansus. As any student of history knows, the Mansus has no walls. Explore, take risks. You won't always know what to do next. Keep experimenting and you'll master it. That is actually such a beautiful summary of Cultist Simulator in a nutshell. Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy, and in this series, Unwrapped, we go into new games. I play a little chunk of them for you with my impressions of them so far after having played them a while to see if it's the kind of thing for you. So, what is Cultist Simulator? Well, from the minds of Alexis Kennedy and Lottie Bevan, both previously of games such as Sunless Sea, of Fallen London, a browser-based uh, story game of great depth, if you enjoy that kind of thing. Fail better games indeed, that studio. Alexis Kennedy indeed used to do some writing as well for Bioware, and the two have come together to produce Cultist Simulator. Now, this is very, I would say, Lovecraftian. There is madness, there is uh, some horror, there are things that go bump in the night, and in fact, beyond that, mysteries, beyond the veil, beyond this world, into the next. So, what is this game all about? You can see I'm purging my save, and I'll explain to you why, because I want to show you this, as it were, from the beginning, how it works. So you are, in the very beginning of this, a, a menial worker, with menial employment. You lose your job as a hospital porter. You are then left a package from an old man in the hospital that you worked at. And it takes you on a voyage of discovery into the known and then the unknown and then beyond. Cultist Simulator is uh, an adventure and exploration, a narrative exploration, and also a little bit roguelike in many ways. And if you're not familiar with the phrase roguelike, other people have used it with regards to this game. I know I've tried to keep myself very, very insulated from this so far until I started playing it the other day. You do have repeat playthroughs. This game has no easy manual or support. A lot of it is discovered by people as they're going along. And I would strongly urge you to have that experience. So in this playthrough, I'm going to be trying to explain the basic mechanics in the first 20 minutes or half hour uh, without uh, spoiling absolutely everything. And if you like the look of this game during the video, I strongly urge that you play it for yourself. So our mission, as it were, is to survive, is to keep ourselves sane, like Call of Cthulhu, like, you know, the various sort of gaming systems and things around that. Your sanity is a factor, your health is a factor. You need to manage, keep a roof over your head financially. You need to manage your sanity as you sort of toy with forces and worlds beyond your understanding. Uh, make sure that you don't get too fascinated and drawn into everything. You need to make sure you don't get into the depths of despair. You need to look after your physical health. There is a lot of juggling in this game. So this is the work tile. You manipulate cards and tiles. So if I drag my menial employment onto the work tile, I'm doing another shift at the hospital. Now, bottom right here, there is pause and unpause, and you can fast forward. You can speed up the game. That is very, very important. Um, I'm doing it in this playthrough. I also want you to enjoy, if you play this game, the writing is, is, is fun with a very dark sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> in places and and glorious in other places. Another shift mopping the hallways, delivering posts to hollow-eyed invalids, trundling corpse laden gurneys to the basement. You can tell our, our person here is really not enjoying their job. So there you go. Um, I got fired. I've lost my job. At least now I have a little time to rest and my health improves. But now I can dream. Now I have the ability to have a dream. So I can go back out to work. You have resources, health and funds. You need health to be alive. If you run out of health, you die. You need funds, one a day to be able to uh, food and lodge yourself. You spoke to the old man in the hospital who knew his name. Uh, why, is, why are you dreaming of this person? I'm going to dream with passion. Now, it's worth knowing that with this game, there is, you know, a bit of a, an expectation that you will die and then you will come back and then you will try it again in a different way and you'll learn more as you go. So there is, I'd say, no such thing as a perfect first playthrough for someone who is new at the game and not read anything. Don't worry about it. I've done my day of unskilled labor. Um, you can see that my health is tired, but I've got vitality. There are various resources. You can see now I have a research tile. Time is now passing. I'm going to put that in a corner because that's a timer. Every time that that ticks through, I need money. I need money to keep bills um, paid. But I've been bequeathed some money and a packet of peculiar papers, poetry, riddles, metaphysical speculations. Fuel for my reason. Um, so at this stage, uh, I've got a research tile which I can use to research the unknown and indeed other things. I can just do things like, if I want to, I can like research with reason. And these, you can have these different kinds of resources. So you have reason, passion um, and health sort of key resources, but then you also have things like vitality. Now I've got two vitalities, in actual fact, I should have done this to start with. I, you can use some of these and convert them into additional resources. So you can get more passion, health and things to help you fund and approach things in various different ways. So think of these as mana, energy, um, lands in Magic the Gathering, whatever you want to call them. They, they will fuel your various activities. I'm going to dream with some more passion. Now I've got reason. I've also got erudition. Two eruditions will make reason. Two vitalities will give me another health. These only you can only get additional of these up to a certain point. So this is my prep phase, as it were. 
Now in my first game, I didn't know about this at all and I was struggling very quickly. So don't worry about that. I won't give away all of the mechanics, but just to give you an idea of what these are, you've got your primary resources, reason, health, secondary resources, vitality and erudition. They also have other purposes. They can be used in work. One thing you need to be careful of is like despair, madness and things like that. Um, there will be lots of things like restlessness that pop up. You need to make sure your health doesn't go down too far. You need to make sure that all kinds of things are managed well. There is a lot of plate spinning in this game. Don't get me wrong. So skill of stronger physique, that means that I now need four vitality if I actually want to get any more health, but two health should be pretty solid for now. Time to research this bequest. I'm going to, can I, can I do a healthy approach? No, I can only do a reasoned approach, right? So I'm going to research this bequest. Now this first playthrough, this aspirant playthrough as it were, as I go back to my unskilled labor. Is this the best I can do? Your character asks himself. Oh, my passion, I've had a nightmare. So dread is something you've got to be careful of. Too much dread builds up, that can cause you problems. I could put eruditions together for some more reason. Um, so, there you go. Um, I've got, my correspondent describes my dreams exactly with all of the terms that I'm familiar with. So I can now research notes on a possible clarity. I first got my first piece of law, which is important. You can combine laws to learn rituals, you can combine laws and assets to try and summon things from other worlds. Um, for now, I'm gonna try and work out who this potential collaborator is. I'm gonna have some healthy sleep. Sleep healthily, which can uh, help you recover wounds and indeed get more vitality and all that kind of stuff. I have directions to Morlands, that's directions to a little shop. You can now also see I've got a new button there. Now, Mystique, you need to be careful with. Mystique and Notoriety. Uh, these two uh, eventually will cause people to start hunting you. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna research with I'm, I'm going to research with some reason. I'm going to try and get two editions and try and get myself an additional reason. So at the moment, the kind of game I'm playing here is kind of a, I'm building myself up before I, I get into the stage of making my cult. Now this, if you just follow everything step by step here, which is what I'm doing here. So if I, as soon as I talk to my acquaintance here, I'm going to found a mystical organisation. Now you can put that off if you want to. Uh, this first playthrough, just if you play through it as, as I did, just sort of saying, yep, I've just, I don't know what fleeting memories do still. You know, I'm a few hours into this game. I still don't know what they do. And that's cool. I quite enjoy that. Um, so I've got another tile here. So this is, um, I've now got an acquaintance. You can see I've got Notoriety and Mystique. I wouldn't be surprised if we see someone starting to sort of ask questions as to what I'm up to. Uh, your activities do not go unnoticed. Um, and all the time you're gonna make sure you keep hitting that, hitting that work button. <laughs> hitting that work button hard. So. Uh, what are my founding principles? Well, you need some law. So the law you put in establishes the kind of cult that you create. So I'm going to be understanding the light that leaks from a fiercer place. Now, that's my reason. You need to keep an eye on some of these like multitasks because they need multiple different things. They take up multiple different resources. I'm gonna have a nice healthy dream for the time being while I'm just uh, getting this all sorted. And I'm going to research the directions to Morelands. A talk lets you talk with your cultists. Look. The wrong kind of attention, but I'm safe for now. now. If I have too much mystique or notoriety, I will get like police detectives, I'll get like inspectors, private eyes looking after me, and they produce um, evidence. The more evidence they produce, they can become a threat to me. I need to deal with them. I can try and get rid of their evidence. I can try and actually send cultists, if I have them in the future, or hired help to try and go and uh, make them no longer a problem, as we say. Uh, my cult needs, a cult with one member is an usual habit. There you go. This uh, Audrey, or whatever her name is, is going to be my first recruit. Okay, so now I've got Explore, that's what this tile So basically, these are all the main tiles. And I've got uh, Moreland Shop. So I'm going to just try and, as I said, I think you can understand quite a bit about people by <laughs> maybe how they how they organize their cultist simulator tables. How they organize my table very, very rapidly becomes chaos very, very quickly. I'm not going to lie to you. Right, so what can I, I'm going to, I'm going to explore an occult strap. Now Moreland Shop, I can buy more lore from. You can use Explore to explore the city. You can send followers of your cult to explore the city. And here we go. I have now, our rise begins. I've founded my cult and my step to greater power. Use your cult to recruit and promote followers. Talk to followers about your cult. It's an amount on cult business. So I've now founded the Mirror of Glory. Keep that by the talk. I've got a temporary HQ. I've never, never, never upgraded that. I don't know how I can make that better. Uh, I'm sure there's a way that you can get a nice posh headquarters later in the game. I haven't got that far yet and I'm enjoying that fact. Now I need to start doing things. So if I want more cultists, I've got reasonable amounts of cash. Uh, where's my, where's my other health gone? Am I, uh, am I dreaming? Yeah, I'm, I'm dreaming with health. That's why. So I need more law to investigate. And if I talk with law like this, then I can I can get more cultists. But again, me just talking like that will get some heat on my back as well. So let's. Uh, I'm going to continue the menial job for now. And I also need more law. So thus the jug uh, little juggling begins. So this is the beginning of Cultist Simulator. From now on, 
you can explore different paths. So I'll try and show you some of the lore mechanics, some of the follower mechanics, some of the final mission mechanics, and then maybe we'll see if someone comes after me as well. And then that will be a good place to give you a good introduction. Now that occult of lore, it's given me a place called St. Agnes Hospital, which is perfect timing. This is kind of like a mission. They did good work here once. Certainly there were a few too many amputations. Then there are individuals. One would prefer not to walk the city streets. And that is sinister. Now, you can go on e expeditions. You need cultists of competency. The aspects um, will tell you things that are uh, uh, about the mission. And you need to put money into it. I've never completed one of these yet because I don't know whether my cultists aren't high enough, whether I don't, don't put a high enough level. You can upgrade your cultists, as it were. Um, or whether I just have problems in terms of running out of money but there are some challenges right so I need to I'm going to research with reason why I don't have things going to Morland shop spending some money in the bookshop there are auction houses clubs and things you can explore as well that will also give you that now you can see the advantage of me having two health because I can roll on roll off as one of my health is recharging I can send the other one to go and work and I do like the UI for in, in the sense of work it generates that sense you every job that you work either your person has been touched or, or worried by the case and can't focus on their work or in the case of the menial labourer, they just hate their work. So <laughs> it's the very menial process of every minute dragging tiles on and off there. It sort of almost makes you feel like, cool, I understand why my person is hating their job. There you go. So I bought a book, a bestiary by Pomander, but it's in Greek. I can't do anything with that unless I have a book that helps me uh, learn and translate Greek grammar. So I need to find one of those. So I'm going to put that. I can always sell it back to the auction house if I really want. Ooh, now from my talking... There's some old and happy far off things. I'm going to put that in the mental state stage of things. So there you go. I've got an acquaintance now. This could be a new cult member. So here's an example of culting. If I drop my cult on there, I can take Dorothy. I can take some law, a watchman's secret. And then I've got to pay. But you can use other trappings. There are other items you can use as trappings apart from money, uh, which is a good thing to do when you're able to. You can, uh, you can for example, oh, oh, I've got no health. Where's my health? Quick, quick, quick. So look, my life is slipping away. So I'll die in 52 seconds. It's lucky that my unskilled labor, there you go. So my health popped back up, so phew. So there you go, if I didn't have, if you don't have one health, then you can just die when a disease comes up. So you need to be very careful of that. Uh, what have we got here? The victory of crowns. Uh, erratic accounts by one of Rune of the hunting and consumption of supposed immortals by shadowy cults of assassins in the late 19th century. Studying law generates more law. With this law, you can unlock rituals. You can summon creatures from uh, the beyond from the Mansus even and, and from other places. So there we go. I've recruited a new acquaintance by invoking a lantern. So at the moment, I've actually got no one on my back. This is reasonably impressive. But this initial path, when I first played through it, you can almost just churn through it and suddenly you've got, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go out and talk about more Watchmen law because I don't have enough law to like research at the moment. I'm just talking about law. That's all I'm doing. Oh, it's just like your YouTube channel, Hammy. Uh, passion jobs, you know, I can be an artist, but uh, unless I've got some kind of yearning. There you go, restlessness, maybe that I can, I can uh, they're also reason jobs. I've now got an affliction. So that's turned my health into an affliction. I can dream on it. I can actually use uh, vitality when this is finished to heal that up. So instead of paying money, you can pay to visit a doctor or you can use vitality to kind of heal yourself. A knife secret, this is called edge law. Edge, <laughs> edgy law. Edge laws is one in who dwells there is blind, cannot be wounded. Another is strong and grows stronger. The principle of battle and struggle. But yes, edge law, if you have followers with edge, for example, they're good at uh, going and fighting. Uh, I don't know what winter is, but different aspects on followers will give you different things. I can actually send these followers out to go and do things, which I'll go and do. Um, I need some passion. I don't know. Oh, I've put my passion into the painting. I need the passion back. I need the passion back. Um, I'm going to... No, oh, I can't translate that from Greek. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. I'm gonna do... just going to go do some healthy research. Okay. Passion exhausted, but I got a glimmering. Two glimmerings would give me another passion. So I can't do that just yet. Uh, I need to dream on the affliction. That's what I was going to do. So ah, there you go. So this will this will just give me uh, more knowledge. So you occasionally get these random buffs. But what I'm going to do is take the affliction. And again, I died from this once. I just didn't realise I had an affliction, and I, I lost my health by it once. So I'm going to use vitality. You can see that. Oh, or I could pay for it. That's going to be healing me up very very nicely. What do I want to be? I can actually just. I'm going to send. Oh, I'm running out of funds now. Look. Look, I've not been working. I've not been working. My funds are disappearing. So again, no money. You have problems. Issues, indeed. So right, I need to have a think, 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 think. Think, Cammy. How are you going to get some more cash? I, I'm going to show you a reason job for now. And the way of doing that is you can basically get a clerical job. 
So there you go, I'm a junior cleric and I'll get one a day for dropping that in there. A reason will help me get promoted and things like that. But it means you always need a reason to help. An acquaintance, I could not muster the passion to bring them into my circle. Damn it. So I get the mystique there, which means that people can uh, come after me. But um, I did not get what I needed, so I need the passion, right? I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go and recruit more cultists. I'm gonna create an army of cultists. For now. So here in the, lie the basics of Cultist Simulator. I want to show you combining the lore as well, which is what I'm going to do. I've got some more erudition, okay. So I need two different pieces of lore. I need a bit more money to do that. Uh, so I'm going to work up some cash, and then we're going to make sure I'm going to have a nice, I'm going to have a passion dream with a nice secret. See what else I can learn about the lore. So Madame Bechet, she edits uh, a magazine and needs my assistance. Now you can take commissions, so you have patrons as well who can help you out. But I'm going to keep Oh no, I don't. yeah, I'm going to keep talking about a knife secret. Because I would like... Uh, let's, get the, let's get the health work going again. Because I'd like to get some lore. You can see I'm accumulating quite a bit of mystique here. I'm quite surprised at the moment. Oh, uh, now if that's... Oh, there you go. I've got demoted. I got demoted because I didn't go to my clerical job. <laughs> you need to use passion to, to bargain with your boss to try and get that back. Okay, juggling going okay-ish so far. But you can see how the juggle is real here. Not the str well, the struggle and the juggle. Um, I need to have some more dreams, I think. I'm not dreaming enough to explore uh, the beyond. So my goal here is to get a bit more cash. You can see, oh, look, come on. Keep going to work, Hammy. Keep going to work. Now there are some more sinister, there you go. We can learn from each other, our popular selves. So she has a somewhat sinister um, secret as well. I'm gonna keep on going out and talking about law. Keep on talking about that law. So you can see at this point, I'm sort of at a stage where it's like, right, I need some cash. I need some cash. And maybe working with a patron is going to be the way to do it. A buzzing in the brain, you can, I've actually never summoned things, but you, uh, you have various sort of things that can, inferences that will help you in summoning rituals and things. You can uh, get to a stage where you're summoning stuff from the beyond. Now this is Mansus Law. So I've learned the way to the wood, the dark tangled mass within the mansus. So the mansus has no walls. I can dream within this to return to the wood. Now exploring the mansus, I think, is one of the conditions for victory. As I've said, I've not completed one of these games yet. So here you can see that all of this mystique got uh, research, and we have a weary detective. He will every so often take whatever mystique and notoriety I have here, and the longer and however many there are, he'll research them for a certain amount of time. The longer he researches, the more chance there is of him turning up evidence, and we'll see that happen at some point. So someone started looking into my affairs. Clearly, all of me standing and talking about law on street corners has had some kind of effect. Um, an acquaintance, come with me. There we go. We are recruiting more people into my cult. As you can see, money is an issue. Um, so this is why I'm going to go and talk to popular cells. Um, my dear, I've been wanting to talk to you. Sometimes I fund scholars of the invisible arts. I'd like to offer you my support, a substantial contribution. All you need to do some days is introduce me to someone who'll end matters properly. I had passion to accept or reason to interrogate her further. Now, uh, what she wants is a sacrifice. She wants a human sacrifice. You need to give her one of your cultists. I didn't realize this. I, I just accepted. I didn't realize what the mission was and I didn't have someone at the end of her timer. So I just failed. You consent with passion. And I believe I've just put my passion elsewhere. Oh dear, I know my passion's there. Okay, so that's fine. Now, obviously, if I didn't know what that was, I could fail just there. Can you see that up here, Mystique, so he's looking through the Mystique, he's gonna look through that, and then when he's done, he's gonna look through the other Mystique, and maybe, just maybe, he'll find some evidence about me. So you can see that goes, that goes in there. And we'll see what happens next. Okay, we need, uh, my health is fatigued. Okay, I've got uh, two different bits of lore here. Ooh, 12, accept Poppy's offer. So there you go, I've got additional funding. Uh, this silver spinster, now I can, if I find an auction house, I can actually send out uh, my believers to discover new places. So what I've not been doing is really using my cultists. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit. Oh, hunger, my goodness, I'll soon starve. So I need to, uh, I, uh, where's my hunger? So I need to make some money, quick smart. Um, uh, uh, I'm gonna, can I get a new reason job? No. So you can see, uh, hang on. I've got, I've just got loads of money. That's fine. Nourishment. I'm going to eat the money <laughs> and all's going to be good. Um, an overlooked place. Aha, the club. So you can see there's an auction house. If I can find an auction house, then I can use it to sell uh, this silver sepulchre and get even more money, which is great. The 
thing with this, and I mentioned it roguelike, is that you're expected to fail, but the neat thing is that when you do fail, you get a few different paths. And then the next path, that kind of takes your play style a bit. So let's say, for example, uh, you're a doctor. You can work a job which has good money, but you focus more on using things with reason. Uh, you can be sort of a, a man, lady, person about town, living off a trust fund and all of the things, implications that that does and doesn't have, uh, which is uh, brilliant as well. Uh, it's quite a fun path. Um, you can be a policeman, working with reason, you know, working like that. Oh no! Oh god! I was going so well. Look, I just so this is the thing, right? That's how you can lose. Like, if you're not paying attention, I, 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 got, I had too much despair. I didn't do things. I could have taken myself to the club and given myself contentment uh, and got rid of the dread. So if I hadn't ignored the dread, I would have been fine. Well, this is a perfect time to show you this then. <laughs> so I get three options. I can be like a, a physician. I can be a detective or I can be a bright young thing. So I start with health, different jobs and things like that. So I'm going to quickly uh, show you, finally, a different approach where I start as the Institute. Now, the nice thing is, is Hammy was a little difficult patient. I had to take some time off after that business ended. So because I died of dread and despair, presumably in a mental asylum. Um, you're now playing. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be Baguette, the physician, physician who actually treated Hammy in his ailing days. The patient spoke of things that could have no meaning, but when I recall what they spoke of, my heart surges, I can ignore the notes no longer, and thus begins the cycle again. So you see, I have my job. Now my physician's job is well paid, but because I'm working in an asylum. Can you see that I start with four reason here? So I am a, a rational person who's very much able to, um, you know, I can deploy a lot of reason, but it'll be harder for me to get things like passion and things, for example, in this playthrough. Uh, time or it starts passing immediately, so I need to earn some of those skrillas. I need some caches so that I can keep going. How to describe, how to sort of continue my experience with cultist simulations. I mash my spacebar for extra time just to make sure I have that pause. It has depth, it has this sophistication, this sort of, you know, these layers that you need to peel back. But that's what you're doing in the game. You're peeling back all of this stuff that's going on to try and reveal these greater mysteries. And I've still not really revealed what they are yet, but the just one more go factor for me personally, is very strong. I just want to know what's going on. I just want to. I just want to find out uh, what the orchid transfigurations actually are. How can I get my way through the mantis? How can I have a victory in this game? There are multiple different end states. Um, you can sort of work your way through a job apparently, and just sort of make it out okay, and similar. So um, yeah, this is a big question. Where uh, I'm still being tracked down by uh, the uh, detective notoriety. Can I make? out the other side of this somehow like alive and somehow flourishing i just don't know but i want to keep playing to find out and for me that's a really positive sign this is uh, certainly not going to be the game for everyone if you don't like the the fail try fail learn repeat process then this might not be for you if you're not into sort of the lovecraftian mystique and horror and mythos and things like that maybe maybe it's not for you. oh good they, they're going to up, uh, upgrade that evidence now see i'm already worried uh maybe maybe not your kind of thing I don't know. But if you like exploring, if you like sort of tweaking, if you like sort of card juggling, if you like resource management, um, if you like the whole sort of theme, and dip, then I love the writing. I, I, I love this kind of thing uh, recently in games and the sort of the, the experience of this and the, the, the effort in the writing and the creation of the lore in the universe and trying to discover all of the lore of all of the different factions. Uh, or I say factions, all of the different cults and, and sort of, you know, areas of paranorm, paranormality, areas of the story and things like that and trying to discover what the mantis is, I'm, I'm all about that. I'm really, really sort of enjoying sort of picking through all of this, trying to piece it all together and trying to work out what's going on. So there you have it. This is selling at the moment, UK-wise, at 13.49. If you get it right now, before the 7th of June, 2018, you get the perpetual edition, which will be some additional DLC, a bit more additional support, uh, and things like that. Sort of, I believe you get a bunch of updates included in that. So a lot of fun, certainly ticks for me, the just one more game, the just an extra 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, hours can fly playing this game, I'll test you that for free. So do not let the interface, do not let the sort of perhaps complexity, perhaps intentional layers of obfuscation, uh, the, the sort of the learning process that you should go through when you play this game. And as you can see, I've been making mistakes as I've been playing this game, and I've played this already for a while. Uh, and I know there's so much more I've got to learn, and I'm sure there are those of you who played a bunch of this when it was uh, in early access and things uh, on Kickstarter and similar. Well, I say early access, there was Kickstarter builds and, and, and sort of crowdfunding support for this beforehand, so people have played a bunch of the game before. Uh, but I've enjoyed it quite a lot. 
What do you think of it? Would you enjoy this or not? Do let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please do throw a like. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of this. If you're a regular watcher of my channel, do let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to be doing this kind of thing every Sunday uh, for the foreseeable future, and we'll see how we go. If there's any games you'd like me to see, cover, uh, play the first 20, 30 minutes or so, and give my impressions of, do let me know. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy, and do keep an eye out for more of Unwrapped, my series where I take a peek into games in the future. All of my Overwatch usual lore is on the channel below, uh, as well as voice lines interactions. And of course, other video games laws will be on Saturdays too. Do let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks to my patrons on Patreon. I wouldn't make this content without you, so do check out patreon.com forward slash hammy if you'd like to get some rewards, get a look behind the scenes of the channel and see what else I'm doing. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy. Take it easy.